In 2013, a documentary called Kids for Cash was released. The film details a 2009 scandal in the U.S. justice system. Two judges in Pennsylvania received more than 2.6 million U.S. dollars in payments from private detention facilities to keep them full. Many children who committed only minor offenses were locked up and subjected to permanent nightmares. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in the tragedy of American private prisons. How did it all start? Private prisons are widespread in the U.S., in Montana and New Mexico. Inmates in private prisons now even account for more than 30% of the state's total incarcerated population. These private prisons contract with governments across the U.S. Their main income comes from the government's money. And in most cases, it is paid based on the number of inmates the prison holds. So for private prisons, there's a clear logic. More inmates, more money. And given Americans' declining prison population in recent years, private prisons have had to come up with some tricks to deal with the crisis. Trick number one, interfere with the justice system and lock up more people. As the Kids for Cash scandal revealed, private prisons may pay judges to put people in jail for minor offenses or make people serve longer sentences. A 14-year-old girl, for example, was sent to juvenile detention just because she made a fake MySpace page for her school's vice principal. Trick number two, donate tons of money to support the Republican Party. Private prison companies have long been loyal founders of Americans' Republican Party. Republicans are much more in favor of private prisons than the Democrats. GEO Group and CoreCivic, America's two leading private prison operators together, have given tens of millions of dollars to Republicans, far more than they have to Democrats. Trick number three, advocate a crackdown on undocumented immigration. The Trump administration's aggressive crackdown on undocumented immigration has resulted in a large number of them being held in detention centers. As more immigrants without legal permission are locked up, these companies are reaping the benefits. As well as putting more people behind the bars, private prisons are likely to reduce operating costs to maximize profit. This has led to chaotic management of private prisons and poor living conditions for inmates there. When more people face longer sentences, when human rights are less guaranteed, and when the system fails to rehabilitate people, the tragic cycle of private prisons can only be broken by strong policies. But when some American politicians have long been founded by these private prison companies, will they agree? It seems unlikely.